pretty people. Welcome to our second rap session with your host Kerry and Terry. And let's get back to the basics. Part 2. Having gone through the college experience, I've come across many different religious backgrounds. From atheists, to Muslims, to Jews, to agnostics, to pagans, I've seen it all. And one of the things I realize about many different backgrounds is that they're all convinced that their religious beliefs are true and everybody else's is flawed. Now, to be real, we can't all be right. Somebody has to be wrong. And for the first time as a Christian, I crave logical arguments to uh, back up my faith in God. And thus my search began. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. And so in this session, we will give sound and logical reasons as to why we think Christianity is superior to every other religion in the world. Now we take the stance that Christianity and the God of the Bible is absolute truth. Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We hope you're blessed, we hope you're edified, and we hope you enjoy. Who is the true God? Is it Zeus? Is it Buddha? Is it Allah? Or is it the God of the Bible? Many people believe that their religious convictions are based on the individual. If you believe it hard enough, it's true for you. Well, we're here to dispute that idea because there's such a thing as absolute truth. Absolute truth is the idea that something can be absolutely true. For example, you are absolutely watching this video right now. That is an absolute truth. To disagree, you're then saying that, hey, there are no absolute truths. But even saying that is an attempt to declare an absolute truth. I will then have to ask you, are you absolutely sure? The point is, there is such a thing as absolute truth. Something can be absolutely true. Now, absolute truth have no contradictions. What do I mean? You can't be watching and not watching TV all at the same time. That's contradictory. Well, there are so many different religions in the world, but they all disagree about something at some point so all cannot be correct. For example, the Mormons believe that all men will one day become God. Jews believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is simply an imposter. The Muslims believe he's simply a noble prophet, while Christians believe he is God. They can't all be true since they contradict each other. Only one can be absolutely true. This is then a quest to find the truth. What is true? And so, why not start with the man who claimed to be the truth? Jesus Christ of Nazareth claimed that of all the gods in the world, he was the only absolute truth. We will then search the evidence to see if they point to Jesus Christ being the absolute truth. We will start by examining the case of fulfilled prophecies. Now prophecies are very important because the predictions were written in a time when there was no evidence of them ever coming true. Now if they do come true, this is a strong point of validation for the persons involved. Now there is no doubt that Jesus actually existed. 
Apart from the Bible, there are many secular texts that confirm Jesus was an actual man who walked on the planet 2,000 years ago. There is a total of 353 prophecies written in the Old Testament that were fulfilled by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Follow the link in the description box for a full list. Many people today believe that the New Testament is not reliable or it has been corrupted. But there is absolutely no proof that this is the case. On top of that, most modern historians, both biblical and secular, do not agree with this claim. The conclusion, therefore, is that the incredible accuracy of biblical prophecies supports Jesus' claim that he was not simply a man, but divinely appointed. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. We will now examine the life of Jesus to see if his deeds support his claim that he was a deity. Jesus calls himself the I Am which is the same name that Yahweh used for himself to Moses. Here, Jesus is claiming that he is God. Now, if Jesus is God, we expect that his actions should be somewhat supernatural. What we expect are miracles. There are 37 recorded miracles about Jesus Christ in the Bible. Now, what's important to note about these miracles is that they're not mythological, they're very practical in nature, like healing a blind man. It is not just the Bible that confirms the miracles of Jesus Christ. We also have secular writers who have written in regards to Jesus' miracles. Let's review what C.S. Lewis, a professor of medieval and Renaissance English, have to say about Jesus' miracle. Julian, the apostate, who was the emperor of Rome, also mentions Jesus' miracles. Now, Julian had struggled to end the power of Christians in the Roman Empire, so we can certainly trust that his recordings are not biased. The conclusion is therefore that Jesus did perform many miracles, and these incredible miracles of Jesus supports his claim that he was not simply a man, but was divinely appointed. <laughs> okay, skeptic, if you say so. We will now examine the case of Jesus' death. The death of Jesus Christ is important because if he did die for real, then the prophecies made by him and the Bible about his death are true. Apart from the Bible, many secular writings have recorded the death of Jesus Christ. For example, the Sanhedrin written by the Talmud also record Jesus' death. Let's review. It is crucial to note that the Talmud took their jobs very seriously. These men were Jews who did not believe Jesus was the Messiah. They were not Christians, but they did document Jesus' crucifixion. We can be sure then that their opinions are not biased. We also have Roman documentation of Jesus' crucifixion. Let's review these accounts. It is important to note that these individuals were professional historians. They researched their work before publishing it, so we can trust that their source is reliable. This view was also shared by Prophet Muhammad and was presented in the Quran almost 600 years after Christ died. To see if this claim is true, 
When being crucified, the accused would push their feet up in order to prevent asphyxiation. To ensure that a prisoner was dead, or to speed up the death, they would break their legs. The fact that Jesus' legs were not broken shows that he was already dead. Also, Roman soldiers were trained executioners, and if they failed, the punishment was death. We see an example in Acts chapter 16 when the guard was going to kill himself when he thought Paul the Apostle had escaped from prison. To ensure Jesus was dead, the Roman executioners pierced him at his side. This was the method used to check if a victim was still alive or in fact dead. If the fluid ran out together in one consistent solution, then the victim was still alive. But if the fluid came out separate in blood and water, as was the case with Jesus, then the victim was pronounced dead. Dr. C. Truman Davis of the state of Arizona after doing an in-depth study on the crucifixion of Christ, said that after so many lashes and extreme exhaustion to the point where he could not even manage the cross, it is very plausible that Christ died quickly. The conclusion therefore is that the death of Jesus Christ, which was predicted by both him and the scriptures, support his claim that he was not simply a man but divinely appointed. Let's move straight into the case of Jesus' resurrection. There are many biblical accounts, countless references to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, skeptic. By the end of the 19th century, archaeological discoveries confirmed the accuracy of the New Testament. Discoveries of early papyri bridged the gap between the time of Christ and existing manuscripts from a later date. Those findings increased the scholarly confidence in the reliability of the Bible. William F. Albright, who was the foremost biblical archaeologist in his time, also approved the accuracy of the New Testament. If you're still not convinced, let's go ahead and take a look at what occurred during the Jewish burial customs. The body was wrapped in linen and about a hundred pounds of aromatic spices were placed on the cloth around the body. The body was then placed in a tomb carved from solid rock. The rock, which weighed about two tons, was then rolled in front of the tomb by a lever and then the Roman seal was placed on top of the tomb to prevent any tampering. And in the case of Jesus, let's not forget, there were at least two Roman soldiers standing in front to guard it. We know that three days later, the seal was broken. Now, could the Roman officials have done it? The consequences for breaking the seal were extremely severe. The officials of the Roman Empire were called into action to find any man who had done such a thing. And if they were caught, it meant automatic execution by crucifixion upside down. People feared this death. Could the disciples have done it? I think not. The disciples were such cowards that they all stayed hidden during the entire crucifixion. And we see even Peter denying Jesus three times in public. The most logical conclusion then was that this was miraculous. We also know that on the third day, the tomb was empty. Now Paul Altha says that the resurrection could not have been maintained in Jerusalem for a single day if the emptiness of the tomb had not been established as a fact for all of those people involved. Both Jewish and Roman sources and traditions admit to an empty tomb on the third day. 
Gamaliel, who was a member of the Jewish High Court, the Sanhedrin, put forth the suggestion that the rise of Christian movement had to be God's doing. He could not have done this if the tomb were still occupied by Jesus or if the Sanhedrin had known where Jesus' body was. We also know that on the third day, the stone was rolled away. Those who observed the stone after the resurrection described its position as having rolled up a slope away not just from the entrance of the tomb, but from the entire massive sepulcher. It was in such a position that it looked as if it had been picked up and carried away. Now I ask you the question, if the disciples had wanted to come in, tiptoe around the sleeping guards, and then roll the stone over and steal Jesus' body, how could they have done this without waking up at least one of the guards? It is simply impossible. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question, skeptic. So, did the Roman soldiers just get up and leave their post? Well, Dr. George Curry, a student of Roman military discipline, wrote that the fear of punishment produced flawless attention in the Roman soldiers, especially in the night watches. This was due to their extreme fear of the death penalty had they messed up. Finally, Jesus Christ was witnessed after his death by over 500 individuals, including his most hostile witness, who was Paul the Apostle. So, after looking at the evidence, we see that the prophecies are confirmed, the miracles are confirmed, his death is confirmed, and his supernatural resurrection is confirmed. The evidence then shows that Jesus Christ is absolutely who he says he is. He is God. This makes every other religion's claim to God false. Christianity is then the only religion we can trust. Thank you so much for watching guys and we hope you were blessed. If you're not saved, why not? There's so much joy serving the Lord. I accepted God many, many years ago and since then, I have had joy unspeakable and you can have the same. Join us this Sunday as we continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and share the reasons as to why we believe. Amen. And as always guys, have fun, have faith, and, and be free. Bye! Bye.